Well, hey guys, last week I put out a video on five signs your immune system is weak. In this video, I went over different skin problems, rashes that come about when your body gets run down. Now, in that video, I got a lot of comments. Hey, could you recommend some supplements to boost the immune system? How can we boost our immune system? Surprise, this video doesn't give tips and tricks for boosting the immune system. And those comments are not surprising. Since 2020, with the kickoff of the pandemic, there has been an astronomical uptick in the amount of Google searches online for ways to boost the immune system. And with that comes a whole host of marketing of different wellness tips, tricks, and hacks that claim you can boost your immune system. Truthfully, there's no such thing as boosting the immune system. It's actually a very nebulous claim as well. The immune system is quite complex. There are many different cell types that make up your immune system. There are a lot of different cellular responses that your immune system can execute to things like injury, infections like viruses, cancer, there's no actual scientific evidence that any lifestyle intervention, supplement, herb, wellness hack, like dipping your hand in cold water or taking deep breaths can actually enhance your immune system. Some people make a lot of claims that you can boost your immune system based on small studies done on cells in a dish that are aimed at trying to tease out different immune responses, but it's not something that can be generalized to human health. Well, we'll just boost up those cells and amp up production. That could actually be dangerous because there's a controlled amount of concentration of cells in your body. And if you have too many, that can lead to problems. When a product or a wellness hack is claiming that it can boost the immune system, what is the metric that is being boosted exactly? Is it the number of cells? Again, that could be hazardous. Is it a type of cellular response from the immune system? That too could be hazardous. If you think about it, too much of an immune response can lead to problems like autoimmune disease, for example. Your body's immune system on overdrive attacking your own organs or a robust allergic reaction like anaphylaxis, that's deadly. So it's not as simple as just press on the gas for this elderberry syrup and we're gonna boost things up and you will not get sick. Don't get me wrong, there is a lot of research that is ongoing about how certain lifestyle factors like diet or stress impact immune responses and immune function, but we individually vary a lot in terms of how our immune system functions. A good portion of how our immune system works actually boils down to your genetics. Some people through genetics have a tendency towards autoimmune disease. Some people through genetics have a tendency towards susceptibility to certain types of infections. Maybe they don't fight off um, certain types of bacteria that are cold encapsulated because they don't make certain elements of the immune system. Applying a generalized statement about boosting the immune system, it could have serious consequences for different subtypes of people. Aside from genetics, age plays a critical role in the function of our immune system. As we get older, our immune function does decline. That's thought to be in part due to atrophy of the thymus gland, which produces T cells that are critical in orchestrating immune responses. Another possible factor responsible for age-related decline in immune response is micronutrient deficiencies. There is a trend that when people get older, say above the age of 65, they don't eat as much, their appetite goes down, and they're an at-risk population for micronutrient deficiencies. Their diet, they tend to not want to have as diverse of a diet and lend to maybe more simple, easy to prepare processed foods, which are not you know, bad, but to solely subsist on that, it is something that the elderly population, it can be an opportunity for micronutrient deficiencies. People over the age of 65 are a lot more vulnerable to pneumonia and things like influenza and certain bacteria. Now, while there's no research to support that any one dietary intervention is appropriate for whatever this nebulous boosting of the immune system is, there's no question that your diet is important for the health and the function of your immune system because in impoverished areas 
where there is a greater risk of malnutrition, you do see a rise in more serious infections. And certain minerals and micronutrients are critical for the execution of the immune system. Vitamin A, remember my video on signs of low vitamin A? All of those were related to, a lot of those were related to a serious increased risk for infections because vitamin A is so important in like the integrity of mucosal membranes and immune responses. So with like vitamin A deficiency, not only do you have poor immune responses, but you have better entry of pathogens. So in you know areas where there's a lot of poverty and mal malnutrition and low, you know, higher rates of hypovitaminosis A, yeah, you do have serious problems with immune function there. So there's no question that certain vitamins and minerals are key for the health of your immune system. And maybe you don't eat the most varied diet. You don't, for example, some people just don't eat fruits and vegetables and in which case you may need to take a supplement. Other dietary choices and lifestyles, like a vegan diet, for example, you're not getting B12, you do need to take a supplement there, otherwise your immune system certainly could suffer. Taking a multivitamin may not be necessary for everyone, it may be useless for a lot of people, but for some people who have you know, maybe not the most varied diet or having to restrict certain food groups due to allergy, maybe they have an underlying issue that prevents appropriate absorption, there would then be a need to supplement. There's no question that herbs, spices, tea are rich in polyphenols that have anti-inflammatory properties that are good for overall health, but to market them as immune boosting is misleading. Stress and chronic stress specifically through the release of hormones like cortisol, it impairs healing and puts you at greater risk for infection. But stress is actually very hard to study. How are you gonna subject study subjects to stress? And stress varies in terms of what's gonna cause stress for one person may not be stressful for another person. It is obvious that emotional stress contributes to a variety of different illnesses. Hives can be triggered by emotional stress, gastrointestinal ups upset stomach, even uh, to a certain extent, heart disease can be associated with chronic stress. And stress releases cortisol, stress hormones that impair healing, and stress can actually interfere with good quality sleep, which is another factor in the health of your total body, including your immune system. When you are sleep deprived, you're more likely to deal with problems fighting off infections, most likely. But it's interesting, from animal research, it would suggest as though there's actually a sweet spot in terms of stress, where you do need a little bit of stress in your life to be healthy. Too much and chronic, chronic being chronically stressed out is at an extreme, but you could also be in an extreme where you're just too coddled and that's not good for your health either. Again, this is based on animal research, but there's likely a little bit of stress that we need to have on a day-to-day -day basis to challenge our bodies to perform optimally. But where that sweet spot lies is hard to say. And then mobility, exercise certainly is important. Exercise improves cardiovascular function, circulation, which helps with the circulation of immune cells to fighting off defense, for defense. Exercise supports total body health. So it feeds into good immune responses. So while there is no logic behind this terminology, immune boosting, you can't you know, boost your immune system and prevent infections by doing things like standing on your head, lying under an infrared sauna, taking an ice bath, drinking celery juice. These things, while they're unlikely to harm you, don't be misled into believing that they're going to protect you from getting an infection, getting a cold, a flu. However, there are habits that you can put in place that can bolster your immune system simply by healthy living. Eating a balanced, healthy diet that includes fruits and vegetables, which are packed with polyphenols and anti-inflammatory compounds that help reduce oxidative stress in the body, and not relying on overly ultra-processed foods. Getting away from pro ultra-processed packaged foods to just more whole foods. Maintaining a healthy body weight, being at extremes of weight are not good for health and it puts you at greater risk for infections. People who are overweight or obese are more likely to have 
colds and flus, as well as skin infections. And likewise, people who are underweight, malnourished, are more likely to have serious illness as a result of poor immune function, likely. Do not drink alcohol in excess. And this is another nebulous recommendation, I will admit. Recently, remember we talked about how the uh, World uh, Heart Federation came out with a statement that there's no safe amount of alcohol. While I'm not necessarily 100% in agreement with that statement, um, alcohol in excess does impair healing and is not good for your health. It generates a lot of inflammation throughout the body. So keep alcohol to a moderate amount. For women, that is one alcoholic beverage a day, and for men, that is two. Get regular exercise. The recommendation is 150 minutes per week of moderate intensity exercise spread throughout the week, so not all at once, or 75 minutes of more intense exercise throughout the week. Stay mo moving, don't remain sedentary all day. I do think that this is part of what puts us more at risk for just poor overall health is remaining sedentary. You have to start prioritizing sleep. This is really hard with our modern lifestyle that puts so much emphasis on productivity. It's ironic because the one thing that can enhance, can boost our productivity is actually prioritizing our sleep. Adults need seven to nine hours of sleep. Many things get in the way of good quality sleep. Alcohol, stress, <laughs> certain medications, caffeine, and our devices that emit blue light, it keeps our brain awake too long. So make sure you're turning those devices off about an hour before you intend to go to bed. St try and stay in a routine for sleep, including on the weekends. It can be tempting to wanna sleep in on the weekends and stay up late. I'm guilty of that as well. But try and stay on a routine. Take a critical look at the sources of stress in your life and eliminate those that are unnecessary or modify your behavior around certain things that are causing you unnecessary stress. For example, if you are like me and you don't like driving in traffic, try and leave earlier, have somebody drive you if you're lucky enough uh, to have somebody to do that for you. Uh, you know, maybe pay somebody if you can afford that. It, it may make a huge difference for you um, as far as your overall health. I mean, what, work, what ends up being appropriate for one person is not necessary for another. And then of course, as far as keeping yourself healthy and preventing infection, the basics, hand hygiene, washing your hands, 20 seconds of rubbing your hands together, all surfaces with soap and water. You don't even need antibacterial soap, just basic bar soap. Yeah, don't underestimate the value of hand hygiene. Washing your hands, hand sanitizer works as well. Uh, so if you know you don't have access to a sink, definitely hand sanitizer. Try and minimize touching your face. I have a video, by the way, on tips to stop touching your face, but by touching your face, you do increase the risk of transferring cold and flu germs to your nose, mouth, and getting sick. Make sure your food is cooked, meats, for example, so that you don't get a gastrointestinal illness, and vaccination. Uh, make sure you are up to date on your vaccinations. Vaccines can help prime the immune system to attack pathogens early and quickly to control them and to control the spread of them to people who are more vulnerable, like the elderly who do not fight off these infections well and are a lot more vulnerable to serious adverse effects from infections. All right, you guys, so those are my tips for boosting the immune system, but you can't actually boost your immune system. You can just do your best to stay healthy, and that includes exercising, balanced diet, not smoking, not drinking alcohol, and getting good sleep, trying to modify stress and control it as best you can, hand hygiene, staying up to date with your vaccinations. That's how you, that's how you stay healthy. It's not by, you know, doing an ice bath. I have seen that, like ice baths and, call, and deep breathing. I mean, don't get me wrong, deep breathing can have a very relaxing effect on the body, but to generalize that in such a way to make people believe that if they just take deep breaths, they're not gonna get the, the flu, that is, that is an egregious statement right there. All right, you guys, I hope this video was helpful and you know, kind of understanding the myth about immune boosting. It's nebulous, doesn't make sense when you really think about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, bye. <laughs>